recently upgraded the TV in our bedroom to a flat screen TV and when we did that I had to change the the stand that we were using because the, the old TV we had which was still a small like 12 inch tube screen TV uh, was resting on a small really a planter stand so I decided to make a stand for this television and uh, I want to show you the process I went through to do that so what you see here is I started out with a 2x9 board. Again, this is discarded pine from uh, Home Depot that I enjoy fixing up and making usable. And I, I cut the ends for square so that I can measure it up accurately. And what I'm looking to get out of this is a 23 inch wide, 23 inch long board by 7 inch wide for the top base of the stand. So I'm using my miter gauge to square up the ends. Now what you're seeing here, and I'm sorry for the dark uh, effects here, I need to get more lighting in the shop, but I'm measuring in from each side four and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is, this is to accommodate the set-top box that will rest underneath the television. So I need to add some height on the ends of the top so that I can easily fit that set-top box and it will fit in snugly. There were a couple of steps that I didn't show you on the video. Uh, my power went out. But I cut the base, and what I did for this base, for the stand, is I glued two 2x4s two together. I ran the edges through the jointer first, glued them together. Once I did that, I cut, I cut it down to 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches for a nice square. I think this would be a, a good size for the stem of the shelf. Also, I planed down for the top, I planed down a piece of wood after I straightened it out, and took the twist out, planed it down, and now I cut it to uh, 23 inches in length. Uh, the TV is going to be six and a half inches deep, so it's, this is about seven inches deep. And what I'm going to do to accommodate the set-top box is I'm going to put an inch on each side, blocks an inch high on each side so that I can slide the box right under the TV as it stands there. What you're seeing here is I'm actually cutting those blocks for the two ends, which are going to be four and a half inches long by seven inches wide to accommodate the height for those set-top boxes that I mentioned earlier. Now I'm going to glue up the blocks that will go on the edges of the stand. Spread it around as evenly as you can so you get a nice bond. And now 
we'll just clamp it up. This is the pattern I use to create the legs for the stand. So now I proceed to cut those legs after tr tracing the, uh, the pattern onto the wood. And I'm using a jigsaw here. It's, it's, uh, it's a little more difficult than utilizing a bandsaw, but I don't have a bandsaw as I'll probably mention again later. But I just slowly outside the lines, I just cut around that pattern until I complete the, uh, the cut and uh, I'll do that with all four legs. So what you're seeing here is the first step in sanding. I'm using 80 grit paper here just to sand it down smooth and get the edges nice and even and smooth and also do the stem. Okay, so some of the steps I didn't show you in the process here was I found the pattern and I made these little, I guess you might call them corbels, to give it some design to kind of uh, soften it out from the hard edges that I made up at the top. Also at the bottom, same thing. I made a, uh, I cut out a pattern. I cut this on a jigsaw, but if you have a bandsaw, it probably would be better. I just don't happen to have one at the time. And I put dowels, two dowels in each of these legs and attached them with glue to the side. And I, did sh I shot a brad in there as well to help hold it. And so now I plan on sanding it down up to 220 grit sandpaper and I'm going to stain it next and I'll show you that process. And so as you can see, I, I've already put a coat of stain on here. The stain I'm is, using is mini wax and it, I've mixed uh, the red Sedona with dark mahogany to try as best I could to match the furniture in the bedroom which is really cherry. Um, so I will put this coat on and I'm going to leave this on longer because I want it to be dark as I can get it to try to match that furniture. Once that's dry I will put three coats of polyurethane on there and I'm going to use a gloss finish for this uh, and I will sand between coats with 220 grit and then I will top that off with some wax and I find that wax kind of evens it out if you find some dull spots with the polyurethane by putting some wax on kind of e evened out some finish and uh, makes it look a lot better. If you enjoyed this little project of mine I hope you got some valuable information out of it. I'd be curious to hear your comments and if you like, please press the like button below. Just one more thing I wanted to discuss on those legs. I didn't really talk about it in depth, but what I found the center point of each of those legs, and I decided where I wanted to lay out the two dowels on those legs. Then I found the center point of the stem and matched the layout lines to the stem and then drilled the holes there so that the, hopefully that the dowels would line up, which they did, thank goodness. And, uh, and then I put some glue in there and lined that up, as I said before. So that's how I did the legs. And uh, it was pretty straightforward. It was pretty easy. And uh, hopefully it's something that you might want to try. Once again, as always, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.